Hello. We are going to do a quick rundown of uh, how more time works in terms of setting up a warband and uh, a few of the little mechanics around it. Um, this video is mainly for the little group I'm going to be playing with who haven't played before, uh, just to give them a little intro, but maybe it's helpful to somebody else. So, uh, what you're going to do is, unsurprisingly, go to new warband. If you, that sounds very loud, but maybe that's just to me, hopefully. Um, you've got these four main choices uh, in the middle here, and then the ones that are on the outside, you have to get the DLC to get. We're just going to go through yeah! with <laughs> human mercenaries. So, you've decided to brave the city of the dam and uh, I'll just show you a few of the things around the... Uh, screen we can skip past this although it's all very interesting but you know time all right so this will be the screen you're presented with and there are a lot of options in here uh some of which don't matter for the moment uh the smuggler's den is going to be where you go to uh sort of progress the campaign you're going to get demands put on you as we go through but it's not something you need to worry about for now uh, the shop we'll come back to. Skirmish is where we're going to go to play our games. Veteran system lets you get little overarching upgrades that let you, uh, I think, apply across the whole game. Um, but you'll be able to use them with this gang as well. Uh, sorry if I call it a gang instead of a warband constantly. It's Necromunda Tour. Campaign you can't go to yet. And next day progresses you through. So for the moment we've got to go to management. All you're going to start with is a leader, and if you head over to this reserve box, you can see what you have available to you right now. Uh, I think it's going to be the same for all of them. You're going to have one hero slot, three henchman slots. Your leader and your heroes are going to be the best fighters in your gang. They're going to get the most uh, options of what they do on a turn. They can usually move further, hit more times, get all the fancy stuff. Henchmen are still very important though, so don't feel like they are not a thing. And they will advance as well, they just won't advance as far as your heroes will. So, uh, sorry I should show you where I'm going. I'm going to go down to the bottom here where it scrolls through your various people in your warband. Uh, and we're going to pick up our first hero. It's only giving me the option right now to pick up a young blood. Uh, I think there are more options that you'll get thrust at you as you go through. But we're going to go down here, we're going to buy him, boom, he's in our gang. And I think what I'm going to say uh, is for our campaign, everybody should just pick up your opening five. So we're going to get some, um, some henchmen as well. And we've got options between, in this one, we've got options between... Uh, what is it? Marksman and Warrior. Pretty obvious the differences between the two. Uh, and they do start with slightly different stats. So if you look up here, these guys get extra ballistic skill. These guys are stronger and tougher. So you can progress them in different ways. You don't have to keep a Marksman being a Marksman. You could make him into a light combat fighter. And in the same vein, you could equip one of these guys with a ranged weapon and have that as an option. But th this is their sort of principal role. So we'll pick up one of those. And two warriors. How about that? It's as easy as this to get them picked up. And there you can see our initial gang. Although this guy's kind of off the side here. Um, so that's that part done. Let's click on our leader. And we'll go through a couple of things. One thing you've got is his description. So you can change out his inventory here. Uh, if there's other options, they'll be up here. Right now, we've just started. We haven't done any missions. We haven't bought anything, so we don't really have any options. But what you do is you look over here, and if you have something you could switch out, you'd pop that in, and you could have him with a hammer or something instead. Uh, there are different types of armor as well. That would go here. You can pick up helmets and headbands and whatnot. They'll go on his head. And um, consumable items such as potions and that kind of thing will be on this side. 
Like I said, initially you're not going to have a ton of options. You've also got skills. Uh, some some of your fighters will come with an automatic skill, um, and you can buy other ones later. But this is something that, apart from maybe reading through just for fun to see what the options are, um, so you can kind of see there's options. You're not going to be able to afford these yet, so just don't worry about this. Apart from reading, if you want to get little ideas. Customization, uh, I have a feeling that in our campaign this is going to be something that we're all going to be interested in. You can change their name over here, which is good. And I think you can change that any time, so if for some reason you've given them little nicknames as well, you can edit that. And you can edit their bio, which uh, maybe some of us will want to do as well. We'll give them little stories as we go. You can also change what they're wearing uh, a little bit, like it just changes the look of it. And so customization in this game in terms of looks isn't huge. It's more like, well, what color do I want to be in? So, you know, if I was going to do Hockland, which is my old favorites, I'd do red and white, and then you can do the arms as well. You just sort of keep scrolling through till you find the one that matches. And you can kind of see what you can do there. I think you can make little changes to how they look, but again, it's nothing major. So just get it close to what you want. Uh, different warriors will have different amounts. I think leaders have a lot of possible customizations. Uh, but yeah, some of them will not have as much. You got your long, young blood here. You can make him a black and white. You can make him Newcastle. So you got color, and then you've got model, so you can change the look of it. So he doesn't have a hat anymore. So you can you can set, see there's a little bit of customization, but you'll find it's not huge, especially with your henchmen. So that kind of gives you an idea of what you can change here immediately. You get your name sorted, your weapons sorted. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to have this guy toting a halberd, for instance. Uh, maybe I'd want him with something a bit more fast-paced. Different things, uh, different warriors will have different options for what they can take. And it'll show you, I guess I can do a quick rundown of what's happening on this page here. You've got description of what they are. You've got the different kinds of weapons they can use, so it'll let you know if they have range options, melee, some, some guys can't really wear armor. Uh, if you get any perks, they'll show up here. If you have any injuries, and sometimes if you pick up an experienced warrior, they'll come with an injury. Uh, most of the new ones will be healthy. And a little rundown of what you've done with them. Yeah, on this side, you have their experience and level, which will go up as you play. You've got, uh, th these two are very important. So you've got their, there's names for them, I can't remember. I think this is action points, or this might be movement points and action points. I don't remember exactly how it works, but these are the ones that you use to hit people, usually. And these blue ones are the ones that allow you to uh, take more in the way of moving forwards, or maybe uh, your stances that you'll take at the end of your turn. Everything else I think you'll kind of work out as we go. Um, this is just kind of showing your how hard you hit and various things. These stats here, your physical, mental, martial, these will level up as you go through and give you more options. They will also bump your actual stats. So these are the things that you will push up and they will all have effects on your resistances and speed and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to go too much into that because that's something you work out as you go along, but it just gives you some idea. Um, you'll sometimes want to push certain ones up to get certain advantages. I, I don't want to get too hardcore into the details of what each stat does. We can kind of talk about that as we go. Uh, so you get your warband set up like that. You'll get them all kitted out, all named up. And then you're effectively ready to play a mission. But now that we've added more guys to the warband, you can go to the shop. If you want to change out what you have, there are at least some options here. It might vary per gang. Um, for instance, you could, you know, you want to pop some heavy armor on your fighter guy, you could grab it here. You decide you don't want to have halberd on your young blood, you want to have pistols, grab it here. So this lets you do some customization right from the start, but obviously you're spending spending some extra cash on that. You will be able to sell the stuff that you don't want here, so once you've unequipped it from your guys, it will appear here and you can get rid of it. But you might want to hold on to it in case you want to use it on somebody else later. 
unless you get strapped for cash. I usually hold on to it for a while. Uh, as you can see, the market refreshes every once in a while, which will give you new options and gradually more powerful options as well. So this is something you're probably going to want to come to to kit out your uh, warband a little differently from everybody else and kind of have people using the weapons that you want. Uh, what else is there to say? Smuggler's Den won't unlock yet. I think for our purposes, for our game, because you can't progress anything until you do your first mission, it's probably worth doing a mission versus the computer um, to start. So it will give you a couple options. Pick one, do one, hopefully you don't die, and then it will let you start to progress. So I think we'll do have everybody do one against the computer, because that will also let you get used to the interface and everything. Uh, if it goes disastrously, just let me know, and you can reset it and uh, reset your gang and do another one. But hopefully you'll get through it okay at least. And sort of see how the rewards work. Uh, what I will say, if I go back there, is when you're looking at the options for when you fight, you're going to see, I'm pointing at the screen, I don't know why I don't have camera on. Um, but you can see, I can't. it's because I can't move the mouse down to show you. But the bottom, it shows you the difficulty. You're definitely only going to want to do normal to start with. It's going to show you the title of it, which is, in this case is Marked for Death, and how much warp stone and other consumable items you might find there. So this one has almost no warp stone and uh, some average stuff that you can loot from the map. The warp stone is stuff that you're definitely going to want to pick up because you can sell it for lots and lots of money. It's way better than the loot. Uh, warp stone is key in this game, so you're going to want to grab as much as you can. Uh, it also tells you what's going to happen in the mission at the bottom and how deployment's going to uh, set up. The computer will match the number of guys that you put in, which we'll also do in our campaign. So if you send five guys, it will send five guys. If you send three, it'll send three, and it will try to make them roughly equivalent. So that's that's quite nice, at least. So you can kind of choose how big a game you want. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say at this point? Oh, I'll show you the skirmish as we're doing multiplayer. So this is where we're going to go for this. Uh, there is quite a lot of options. So we're going to be doing contests because that means that stuff will uh, show up for everybody. We'll set minimum and maximum rating and that will help keep everybody's... When we fight, we'll keep that min and max rating really tight and that way it'll be a fair fight. So it'll set up a lobby. Uh, we'll probably do random map. And... Yeah, I think that'll be that'll be pretty much how we're set up. Uh, I guess right before we go, I'll just show you what would happen if you jumped into a game. So for your first game, let's say we go for this one. It'll ask you what warriors you want to bring. If you had any in reserve, you could switch them out. Or if you only want to take four guys, for instance, you could take one out. Uh, I think for everybody's first game, you probably want to play with five so you get experience on everybody. So I drop him back in. You can scroll through him to see on the left hand side which guys you're bringing. And then I wouldn't do launch mission, I would do launch and deploy because that way you get to choose where your guys go. Otherwise the computer just drops them where it feels like and that's not great. Your scouts have discovered a rival in the so it'll tell you what the mission is and what you want to do. So in this one you've got an additional option of taking a specific guy on their gang out of action and if you manage to do that and claim his little token um you will get bonus rewards for the mission and it gives you a little uh spiel on what's happening as well so uh oh boy it i don't play on the computer very much so i can't remember what the map key is there's like a zoom out uh, button, but I don't remember what anything is right now. I probably should have remembered to look at this. Oh, okay, that's stats. There's lots of different things you can pull up during the game. Oh, okay, I found the scroll between places. So when it's deployment, you'll see there's all these different spots. Just behind us there is our cart that has all our loot on. You don't really want your cart to get looted, but 
it's a way across the map from your rivals anyway. Yeah, I'm just trying to find... Ooh, I found it. Okay, so this is the map. Uh, what you can see here, my mouse is a bit sensitive at the moment, is these are all the places where our gang can go. And scroll that a bit. Our enemy are going to gather around here, so they'll have a bunch of points around here that they're gathering. And you can see there's lots of warp stone points in the middle. It shows you where all the buildings are. You're going to want to pull out this map over and over. Apologies, I can't tell you exactly <laughs> where that map is. Uh, and it shows where your guy is deploying. Oops, I'm setting uh, points. Let's see if I can get out of here. It was over here somewhere. I'm sure of it. Definitely should have researched this before. Oh, it's shift. Okay, so it's shift. And then we can click to deploy them. And you can see at the top of the screen, that's the order of initiative. And you set up in order of initiative. So the faster your guy is, which means the less light, the less heavily armored he is, usually the faster he is and the, and the kind of weapons that you have will have an effect as well. And then you can always see up in the top right hand corner when the enemy is doing their thing. So they were faster than us. But now it is our turn. So you'll see you have a circle here and then you have a point. When you walk away from something, you'll drop an action point, which are the blue dots at, under our name. I can't point at them on this screen, but you'll see that they're going black as I move around. So the further you move, the more of those blue points you'll get. In this version, you can drop back to them and it will refill them and you can go in a different direction. I think when we play, we're going to have that turned off so that once you've gone somewhere, you can't track back or when you do track back you won't get your points back so you've got to be certain of where you're going it just it'll just stop people from being so able to um like spot out the enemy and then essentially camp them knowing where they are you have to sort of go into the dark essentially uh and then you have your red points which as you can see will let you do different stances so i only have red left right now if i go back they're also what you use to attack. I should have a different stance now. So yeah, I could use some blue points to do a dodge stance. Uh, and because I've got a sword and a shield, I can do a parry stance as well. So your stances, I guess, are also used by your movement points. And then anything you do that's more aggressive is going to be in the... Uh, it's going to be a red dot action. So... As you can see, our chance of not getting hit here is better if we do a parry stance, so... Uh, that's not what I wanted to press. So I'll just confirm that I want to do that. My turn's over. If anybody runs up and hits me now, I'll have a chance of parrying them. And then it's flicks over to the computer and they get their turn. That's the very, very basics of it. Um, obviously there's a lot more detail that we could go into. I suppose the only thing I'll say is... That it's going to go through everybody's turn once on the top of the screen there where you see the initiatives listed. Uh, our, we're obviously a bit slower than our opponent because most of our guys are towards the back end. Um, and then it will swing round to a new round where everybody will be reinitiated. That's not really the right word. But that your initiative will reset and if you've had anything that buffs or uh, reduces it, that will show up. Oh boy. So you can see our opponent has got forwards really fast because they're lurking in the distance there. So if I go to the map again, we can now see them on the map. Once you can see them on the screen, you can see them on the map. And we're aware of their presence. So that's a little scary. I'm not going to go into multiple turns or anything, so I was trying to make this relatively quick. But yeah, that's uh, overall what you're looking at. There's lots of different things that let you see what you're doing, what you have it on your person. Play around with that in your first game. Uh, make a little note of the various because there's a there's a controls uh, key binding thing. Have a quick look at that and see which ones might be useful, and then play around with them in the game so that you can kind of be used to that for when you get going. Because it kind of lets you know some useful information, like hey, what am I carrying? What are my special moves that I can do, and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, everything else we'll explain as we go. Thanks for watching, guys. 
hopefully that gives you a little bit of an intro and helps you out. Other than that, good luck. And uh, for those who are playing in our little campaign, ask me any questions if you have them. Bye-bye for now.